Marie Poirier here, award-winning professional speaker and international best-selling author. So I've been getting these same common questions about the speaking industry over and over again. As somebody who's been in the trenches now, 15 years, after talks, whether it's after I get off the stage or emails or social media, questions that I get after the fact, people ask me things like, how can I get paid as a professional speaker? How can I get booked with the right clients? How can I get these high fees that I keep hearing about that speakers get? Or how can I share my message and impact a lot of people? How can I bring my message to a bigger audience? And then one of my favorite questions is for entrepreneurs and business owners who say, you know what, Corey, I'm not as concerned about the speaking fees, but how can I share my message with an audience to grow my business and my brand from the stage? So these are some of the common questions that I get asked regularly. And after 15 years of being in the trenches and getting these questions, and after years of being uh, actually taking the time to interview some of the world's top influential leaders to the tune of about 3,500 now, I finally decided I'm ready to start sharing these answers. So we put together this four part video series for you. It's packed with amazing content, exclusive, what I'm gonna call secrets of the trade. Uh, these things that can transform your life and maybe take things to a whole other level if the speaking industry is something that interests you. So we decided to put this together to help make this all possible and finally start giving you some big answers to these big questions that I keep getting. Uh, I, I just told you that we're gonna answer some big questions in this video training as we go forward. Well, today I'm gonna cover two lessons that I think will answer a lot of questions you might have, especially if you're early on in your speaking career or if you've been speaking for quite a while and you wanna take things to the next level. Uh, so today I'm gonna to cover uh, a thing called the spider method. Won't tell you any more than that, I just wanna tease it and leave it at that. And I'm also gonna share with you a very efficient way to gather leads quickly, to uh, build your newsletter tribe and get a lot of testimonials in one step and in very short order. But before we go there, I just want to let you know as well that in video number two, I'm actually going to show you how you can become positioned as the expert, the go-to expert in the eyes of your clients. I'm gonna give you some strategy for doing that. And then I'm also going to uh, share with you some value ads that you can deliver to your clients and you can offer to your clients even before you get booked so that you can set yourself apart and perhaps get booked a lot quicker than speaker number two and speaker number three. But before we go there, again, here are the two lessons for today. Talk to you in a second. So I promised in the training today that I was going to reveal two methods that you can use to skyrocket a brand new speaking career, or if you've been speaking for years, take it to the next level. Uh, the first one here, super powerful, at least for me, it was a game changer when I started doing this. So early in my speaking career, my biggest struggle was people was ask, were asking me all the time for testimonials. And so I didn't have an efficient way to gather a lot of testimonials quickly. So of course you have clients to say, can you give us 10 testimonials? And I hadn't done 10 talks. So there's your challenge, right? So this allowed me to do that. And I'm going to share with you how I was able to fast track and get testimonials really quickly. Another challenge of course is getting leads, finding paying clients. That's a big challenge for most speakers when they start out. Whether again, you're using speaking to uh, grow your entrepreneurial endeavor or to leverage speaking to get in front of the right clients and share the new news about your business, you still want to find new clients that you can share that message for. This is going to help you do that. So again, it doesn't matter if your goal is to become a paid speaker or to leverage speaking for another reason. One thing I wish I had done earlier was build my newsletter list. And this th same thing I'm gonna show you is an effective way to build your newsletter list. You're able to do all three of these things in one step just by delivering a talk. So what am I talking about? Well, it's my handy little evaluation form. Took me a while to craft it to get it the way it is now. It's only, at this point, I guess, seven, well, six questions let's say, it usually takes people five to 10 minutes to fill it out. Interestingly enough, I know a lot of speakers don't do that. They just go by the, uh, the actual evaluation form the client provides where they get them to rate them one out of 10. And the reason I know that is because when I ask clients if I can hand out mine, they get surprised and shocked. They haven't been asked that before. So the difference is this is open-ended questions. It's not your one out of 10. This is actual questions that you can gather info from. You can, another thing that you find out from this evaluation form is what they thought of your talk, what they would change and improve. This is a lot of stuff to find out from one little tiny form that takes five minutes to fill out. And another little quick tip before I go into what the form includes and how to use it is what I will say is a lot of people will tend to now want to say, well, can you just email it to me and I'll fill it out digitally. My experience is when they ask that question, less than 5% ever send it back. And why? 
We know why. They get busy when they get back to their office just like we do, and this becomes less of a priority when they're not still in sight. So my experience is if you want it filled out, you want 85, 90% of them filled out, get it filled out on spot, on site. Get the meeting planner to say it's okay, Bring it up before you start talking. You might say, I put some evaluation forms on the table. I'll explain that later. Or maybe you just explain it at the end. Uh, and actually, what I like to do is I'll offer them something like a copy of one of my free books. And I'll say, I'm only asking for one favor in return. You know, can you take five minutes to fill out the evaluation form? And I make the little comment that I don't know. If I don't know, I don't grow. And then I'll say, you know what? Uh, just what you put on here could help the next group as well. Or it may even help your organization find out what, uh, what you're looking for in future talks. And I find if you show them why you're asking them to do it, the majority will in kind say absolutely. So again, this evaluation form, pretty basic uh, in terms of it's only a few questions, it uh, takes no amount of time really to fill it out, but here's the kind of questions that are on it. One of them is, uh, do you, is there something that else about the topic that you wish he would have covered? So that'll tell you what they're looking for in the future. It might say, do you know of others who could benefit from a similar uh, talk? So that's one of my questions. This person here put, yes, please contact me. The other person put my team. So there's two leads that came to me as a result of me delivering the talk I was already there to deliver in the first place. Sure, some people come up afterward and ask if they can bring you in to talk to their organization, but this gets them thinking about it. This reminds them. It's more of an active way to do it. So this is an important question on here, and again, it's a way to generate leads. I, I mentioned that's one of the three things this form does really well, generate leads. I mentioned another struggle was that I wish I would have built my newsletter sooner. Well, one of my questions is, would you like us to add you to our newsletter list? And they have to tick off yes, and then provide their email address. And then, so now all of a sudden you have people being added to your newsletter list. Here's the big one. You're doing these early talks and you're getting asked for, again, testimonials all the time and you don't have them to give. There's a great quote that says, there's no good reason to speak for free, but there's a lot of good reasons to speak for no fee. And one of those reasons is because you want to find clients that you can bring on, especially if you're brand new and people are scared to take a chance on you. So what I did was I would get rotary talks or chamber talks where you have individual business owners in the room and you're speaking for no fee, but you're getting in front of a nice size audience and one of my questions is, can we use your testimonials or comments in conjunction with our services? So all of a sudden now, if you hand out 100 evaluation forms, and let's say 70 are filled out, and 60 are extremely positive, and say why they loved your talk, you now have 60 testimonials from one talk. This could be your very first talk ever, and all of a sudden you have testimonials, you have leads, and you have people on your newsletter list. I don't know about you, but I think that's a pretty powerful little sheet. So this is takeaway number one, and the cool news is, what I want you to do if you're so inclined, is we're providing this a copy of my evaluation form for you, so you can go right below the video, and you can grab yourself a copy and use exactly as it is, or you can modify it if that feels right to you. But again, I think you'll find that if you make sure to get evaluation forms filled out at your future talks, you'll have a lot more success than if you go it alone and hope for the best. So don't wing it. Bring an evaluation form along with your talk. So I promised you as well I was going to take you through the spider method. This is one of my favorite little tools for coming up with creative brand new talks, for customizing your talks, for even just getting your creative juices flowing, uh, for being able to put a list together of something you want to work on. And so where this came from is I spent, as you may know from uh, some of my work in videos, I spent a number of years performing stand-up comedy. And so in the stand-up comedy world, whenever we were having clinics and we were trying to find creative ways to come up with new bits or, or something we might want to work on, we put this spider method to task. We started using it. And so an example might be if you wanted to come up with a theme or a concept, you might decide that you want it to be around pets. And within that scope of pets, you might decide, okay, I want to have uh, some sketches or bits that could be around, let's say, things that cats do with their cat litter, or things that dogs do when we're not at home. That could be the example. And this spider method would help us come up from scratch with these ideas of bits that we might be able to put together, or jokes, or, or things that might work as part of the bit. But I realized somewhere along the way, when I made the transition from comic to speaker, there's no reason why this wouldn't work in the speaking world when you have to come up with a brand new talk or you have to customize a talk. 
So this could be, you could be watching this and this could be your first talk ever. You might not have even given a talk yet. And one of your struggles is, how do I even know what to talk about? Or how do I customize a talk? You could be a seasoned speaker who's been delivering the same talk for a while and you want a fresh new talk. So I'm just going to give you what I use to get the creative juices flowing when I want to perhaps customize or start a talk from scratch for a brand new client. So I want to show you how I would do a, how I'd use this spider method as it relates to a talk that I might be putting together. So let's just say for instance that I got a call from Tourism Florida. They wanted me to deliver a customer service related talk for their team. And so in this case here, again, I'm going to use Tourism Florida. We were just in Florida on vacation, so it just kind of brought it front of mind. Uh, but what I would do, let's say again, if I was starting from scratch, uh, to come up with and get the creative uh, juices flowing, what I would do here is I would draw my spider body. And so what I would do is I would decide, okay, my talk is for tours in Florida. So I might put an F there for uh, Florida, just to remind me that's who the talk's for. And then I might put a C here in relation to customer service. So again, the theme's gonna be around customer service. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to say, what talk could I give to tours in Florida? Let's say I'm customizing a talk for them, or I'm starting from scratch with a brand new talk or let's say I'm moving into customer service, or this could be your first talk, this is a great way to get things started. So if it was again tourism Florida, and I want to talk about customer service, I'm a storyteller as a speaker, so I'm gonna obviously use stories. One thing we learn in the world of stand-up comedy is that everything is better in three points. So you're, you're best to use threes. And I believe this comes back from the fact that we can retain uh, threes. Once you get up to four and five points or, or bigger numbers like that, it's hard for people to retain what they're supposed to take away and use. So again, in the world of stand-up comedy, we, we learn the threes. So even though you can use your spider method for multiple legs, as many legs as you want, in this example for a talk, a short keynote talk, I'm going to use three legs so I can come up with three stories and takeaways that I want from my talk. So let's say the first one, again, top of mind, Disney. So during our vacation, I had a great experience, a great customer service experience at Disney. This was thanks to the staff member, as they call it at Disney, the cast member, what this person did for me. So in this case here, Disney could be who I want to share this customer service story about. This could be my first story that I'm going to make a point from. And then to let me know what I want, let's say, the point to be, uh, in this case here, I'm not going to go into the full story. Uh, you would probably get a laugh if I did, but basically I lost my keys at Disney. But it wasn't really the fact that I lost my keys, it was how they uh, were able to help me make this problem go away, let's say. And it really came back to the training that this employee had to make my experience a good one. As they say at Disney, uh, the idea is to make and help have everyone leave happy. So she definitely had me leave happy because she was able to help me find my keys in record time. So in this one here, uh, let's just say uh, I put C for cast member, again, as Disney calls them. But really, the takeaway point is the importance of the training you deliver your, to your staff around having your customers leave with their problems solved. Let's say that's the example. So again, this is my first story and first point that I'm going to share. Uh, so I might decide my second one could be uh, we had a bad experience, the opposite, with a, uh, with, um, a car rental company. I'm going to put an F there. Uh, you can decide whether or not that's the actual uh, letter for the car company. But in your case, you'd probably put the real name uh, so, or the real letter. So again, we had a bad experience with a, with a car rental company. And so what I wanted to do, I want to actually make a point from that as well. So that might be a situation about why do we have a bad experience? You know, why do we have a bad customer service experience? I see somebody else wants to be in the picture here too. Um, so in other words, it might be why, uh, in the customer service thing with the car rental company, it could be, okay, well, I want to talk about the importance of what, how do you make problems go away? How do you fix problems? What's your solution system in place? So I might put an S there for solutions. So I might talk to Tourism Florida about the importance of having a situation whenever a customer is unhappy. Uh, so this one here was a bad experience that I had, but it was my own doing. This one here is a bad experience we had because of the employee. So the question becomes, what situation do you have in place to make sure that that customer gets happy again? And then finally, uh, the third one, we had went to a concert actually. So we went to see a guy named Kev, Kev Mo. And Amazing experience, amazing concert. So in this leg here, what I want to talk about is I might want to talk about how do you deliver an experience. So let's put an E there. Again, I'm just randomly picking the letters out from the, but for, from the takeaways, but you get the point here. So Kev Mo, that was the he delivered an experience for us, 
And then, so that's the story I want to tell, so this is the reminder of the story. But the takeaway is, how do you create an experience? Kevin will create an experience, I'm going to share that and I'm going to talk to them perhaps about how do you create experiences. So you can see in a matter of what, three or four minutes, how I actually created a talk from scratch based around experiences that I had and stories that I want to tell and takeaways that I want the client to take away. So I believe that you can use the spider method whether it comes to talks or whether it comes to creatively you want to come up with ideas and brainstorm. It could be that you, are, uh, you want to get media and you could say, okay, my brand is in the center here, brand me. And then you could have eight legs and say, here's the eight ways that I want to use media to position myself as the expert. So there's many ways you can use the spider method. But for the sake of today, whether you're a brand new speaker or you've been a speaker for years and you're struggling to either customize your talk or create a talk from scratch, I believe this is a great way to get the creative juices flowing. And don't be scared to do this, this spider method with somebody else. Maybe you have an accountability partner, a team, where you come up with an idea together. So I hope you enjoyed the spider method, uh, and I hope you continue to enjoy the training that we're going to keep giving you over the next few days and the next week, in fact. And thanks again, and it's Corey Poirier. Now, don't forget, we have video two coming up from Saskatchewan in Canada and Edmonton in Canada, where we're going to talk about how to become an authority and how to set yourself apart from other speakers when it comes to your proposals and in general, to give some value ads that other speakers might not be offering. Uh, until that time though, I'd love to see you go and make some comments below and start some activity and chatting so we can get engaged during this whole process. Let us know what you think, let us know what you're enjoying, let us know what you want us to add in. Thank you guys so much and now here's Shelly with your homework for the day. I'm actually going to do the homework with you along this video training series. Um, I've been working closely with Corey and I would love to launch a speaking career myself and I definitely do believe that I have a story that I would like to share. For me right now, today, I struggle with keeping a balance in my life and it's something that I know I need to keep but it's something that I struggle with. So um, I've learned a lot of techniques and some days I put them to use and some days I don't but uh, for today using the spider I am gonna my main topic inside the spider body is going to be balance and off of this I every day need to put a little bit of physical activity so I'm gonna put a P up here for physical activity so that could be doing yoga or meditation but I need to have some physical activity so Another one um, that's going to bring balance into my life is going to be social. So I need a little bit of social time and a little bit of fun with my friends and time to get out of the house. Another one is going to be spirituality. So that is different for everyone, but it is something that is very important to me and I need to have. So another way that I need to bring balance into my life is incorporating a little bit of mental mental work. So this could be, actually I shouldn't say work, it's not work, but I need to have a little bit of meditation. I need to time to get out of my head and I also need time alone to learn. Learning to me is so important and right here at this moment I'm learning because I just learned how to do a spider. Once you're done putting together your spider, we want to see it. We want to hear about it. We want to know what you think about it. Do you like it? Was it easy? Was it hard? Do you need any help putting one together yourself? At the end of the video is our email and we would love to hear from you and get engaged with us so we can get engaged with you and we can reach out to you once we get that email. Or if you want to leave some comments below, leave them right below and we are going to read them. We are going to get engaged with you. So right now it's time to get to work. How can I connect emotionally with my audience? 